let's uh let's get started by um just doing intros if anybody who hasn't joined uh these calls before would like to um uh take a minute to um introduce themselves to the group that would be uh that'd be great hi can you hear me okay yeah cool i'm at the airport sorry uh, I'm Noor. This is my first time here. I'm the president of the blockchain club at my school, University of Rochester, and some of the members uh, are involved with Radical Exchange, so they talked about it to our club. And I was really blown away by the vision and the ambition of this movement. So I decided to join and I'm looking forward to being involved in any way I can. Thank you. Terrific. Nice to meet you. Um, I can go next. I, I haven't been on in a while. It's not my first time, but it's been a little while. I'm Ann Connolly. Um, I'm a professor at Boston University. I teach blockchain for social impact uh, and generally work in the social impact side of the space. And I'm actually working on something called quadratic trust. That's a, a new model of looking at how you can use kind of clout or points that you've earned within your community and lend those to other people in the community to help them get future benefits. Um, so that'll be coming out. I'm working on it with uh, Kevin Awaki from Gitcoin and hopefully the August or September, we'll see a little micro prototype of that. Awesome. Uh, nice to see you, Anne, and would actually love to hear a little bit more about, um, about quadratic uh, trust after we get through with intros, if it makes, if it makes sense. Um, and I see Sean Finnegan um, has a hand up. Hello. Uh, yeah, my name's Sean. Uh, I am a software engineer uh, working mostly in uh, games development and working on the PlayStation platform for the past couple of years. Um, yeah, so interested in software and in systems and always been interested in kind of political economy and, and politics in general. Uh, read Radical Exchange a couple of years ago and I was like, oh, yeah, this is, this is pretty cool. I want to get more involved in this. Um, and just been kind of reading and learning about it all. Uh, and yeah, I've got a bit more time lately. So I want to start contributing a bit back. Super, nice to meet you. Uh, can I go? Uh, yep. Uh, my name is Rajar Sarasa. Uh, this is my first meeting uh, uh, to this group. Um, I want to basically understand uh, what this group does and uh, uh, how I can contribute, but also I'm uh, working on a project to link uh, crypto economy to human values. Uh, for example, truth in politics, uh, justice, equality, and stuff like that. Uh, so I want to know like uh, a project like that also aligns with uh, uh, what uh, Radical Exchange does. So it's also, I'm here to understand uh, that uh, point of view. And hi, my name is Ryan. Um, I am a consultant out in the Bay Area uh, and recently went down the uh, just the general blockchain technology rabbit hole. And that led me to uh, quadratic voting and quadratic funding. And that led me here. So I'm really just here to check things out, say hello and see what y'all are up to. And uh, if there's something I can get involved in. Awesome. Lots of new faces today. Thanks for joining. Um, Martin. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, my name is Martin. It's my first uh, community call uh, with the group, but I assist. I went to the well. I, I attended the um, yearly uh, conference last year, so that I guess that's my second kind of meeting uh, with the people from Radical Exchange. But uh, I'm interested in Radical Exchange since um, I was following uh, Santiago's theory. I was interested in uh, uh, liquid democracy and uh, new way of governance and political decision making. And uh, I realized he was a, a presenter at one of the conference of vertical exchange. So I, I, I came and uh, I was happy with uh, what I saw. So I, I'm back here today. Thanks for joining. Um, Albert. Hello, Papa. Hello, I'm Albert Cañigral. I'm based in Barcelona. I know there is, or there was an active chapter here, uh, but I did not join before. 
I recently uh, became part of the Catalan government in the area of open government. Um, and while researching uh, new topics, new ideas, I found this movement and I wanted to learn a little bit more because what you've been publishing is very, very interesting. And yeah, happy also to connect with the local community in Barcelona. Super, nice to meet you. Uh, Charles. Hi all, um, first meeting as well. Super interested in um, everything Red Oak Exchange is doing. Um, consider myself an, an urbanist. I work for a small startup that um, does a lot of work in kind of the micro mobility space, but um, Red Radical Markets a few years ago found it incredibly powerful and really loved some of the ideas on the kind of common ownership tax and things of that nature, um, especially as it relates to things like the housing crisis and other um, topics related to urbanism. Um, everything else as well, uh, I find fascinating. So happy to be here. Thanks for joining. Um, Reuven, hello. Hey guys, I was on a few calls in the, in the conference, so I have been in touch uh, a little bit, but very passive. I work um, also in the blockchain space for many years on uh, decentralized identity, and I'm uh, chairing the decentralized foundation, so I'm very much coming from that angle. And I'm very excited to combine like this governance expression with the NFT aspect. So this whole DAO space in the federal economy and the board is super interesting. Let's move together. Oh, muted. Um, Joseph. Uh, maybe that's me. I'm Jose. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm a, a, my name is Jose. I'm a data scientist. I, I work for the energy industry. I'm based in Germany. And I have recently read the, the book Radical Markets. And that's why I, I got interested in this topic. And that's why I joined the community. And I'm very interested in, in, to see uh, where some projects uh, of this uh, of radical exchange uh, directed to, to energy markets. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. and and be part of the community. Nice to meet you. Uh, Letty. Hello, thank you, I'm Letty. Uh, I was here, well, I'm here for the first community call. I tried to briefly uh, sign in on in January the 6th, but I couldn't make it like from the following months. I'm super interested in all the uh, radical foundation ideas and uh, bringing them to reality in the specific themes that they can uh, bring value. So yeah, I'm here for the sink around the, uh, uh, the pilot you are making to, uh, to steward this and cool, cool to, yeah, to, to say hello to everybody and being here to, to see how we can make things happen. Super, thank you. And Alex. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm in Toronto. I found out about Radical Exchange through something called Effective Altruism. Somebody by the name of Shirley Beacons uh, mentioned it at a thing a while ago. She also mentioned something called Complexity Weekend that I got involved in. So that was super interesting with all of the systems innovation stuff. Um, I was involved in the Radical Exchange uh, voice uh, beta, found it really, really interesting. And I've decided to try using with uh, within Effective Altruism, there's some reading groups. So they'd sort of suggested a process to kind of go through and agree on topics. And so I thought, well, why not try to use Polis for that and try to use quadratic voting? So I was like, well, it's essentially radical exchange voice, but just a very manual way of doing it. So I'm super excited to see radical exchange voice rolled out as a product people could actually use within other communities. Because I think there's some amazing tools you guys are working on. And there's just like a great hunger for like better ways of just making decisions. I think um, somebody, CE, I think, put something in terms of like a pre-meeting survey kind of concept for meetings like this, which seems really, really interesting. And I'd love to hear more about things like that. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thanks for participating in the, um, in the beta too. Um, all right. Well, uh, I think let's, let's just get started. We'd love to hear, you know, hear some folks share about um, projects that they're working on and, and perhaps uh, send up some beacons for things that other folks can get involved in. Um, and um, uh, Anne, if you would like to start by sharing a bit, uh, that would be, that'd be amazing. 
Sure, yeah, the whole concept behind um, quadratic, quadratic trust came from uh, quadratic funding and Gitcoin and their whole system. And the idea that there's many different ways to support companies or projects beyond financial. Um, and so the whole idea was how could you take other actions that people have or other clout that they've built up and funnel that into like a quadratic funding mechanism. Um, so the initial pilot, which we're trying to keep as simple as possible, essentially um, takes someone's Twitter followers as their clout. Um, but that clout could be any number. So if you're in an association, it could be how many meetings you attended or how many years you've been involved or whatever number it is that's important. Um, and then that gives you a certain number of vote credits. And in our little, as clout, yeah, sorry for whoever, um, I made that comment, clout. Um, and so essentially what you can do is that use those vote credits to vote for people or projects or things that you wanna highlight within the community. And so in our pilot, we are going to do, um, you know, you use your Twitter follower account to vote for other people that you think are interesting and their projects are interesting. And then they will go up and down the leaderboard so that smaller projects can get more attention. But again, because it's quadratically manipulated, um, if you put more vote credits towards a particular person, then that, uh, that will lead to fewer votes unless versus spreading them out. And so our, our goal is just to see how it goes in the pilot, see what, what happens, but ideally looking for, you know, good use cases in the, in the real world, um, how you might see this applying to actual associations. Um, and yeah, we're hoping to, to roll it out kind of August, September in and around with the next grants round, just to get a bit of um, publicity around it. But yeah, I would love to hear feedback, thoughts, anything um, on it. And uh, otherwise, yeah, curious to get people's thoughts. Would love to, um, uh, at least would love, I mean, everyone should feel free to jump in with questions here, but I'm, I'm wondering personally, like um, if you have, um, or if you could share a little bit more about potential use cases that you have in mind, like like social media platforms, or I mean, is the main sort of, is the main sort of goal, like uh, focusing attention in sort of, in these sort of places where attention is shredded, like social media platforms or what, what kind of applications are you thinking? So it could be anything from, yeah, like if you're looking at Gitcoin grants, for example, like let's say you didn't have money that you could contribute, but you had a really big community following. And so one way to, you know, support the project would be to tweet out about them. Um, so maybe, you know, the number of likes or retweets that you got on a particular tweet could feed into the formula for them to that project to get matching funds, something like that um, could be an option. Or say, if you wanted to have um, a vote for people to join a leadership committee within an association, um, people who had you know more invested interest in the association they were part of based on whatever metric you decide, you know, again, meetings shown up for years in being involved. Um, then, you know, that could play into the number of vote credits that they would get. So it's sort of a mix of like voting, um, but in a sense where your vote credits come from a particular, you know, involvement index in a particular community, however you would set that up. Cool. Looking forward to, uh, looking forward to playing with it. Thanks, we'll keep you posted. Is there any like thinking about, uh, I guess like groupthink and like how a system like that could kind of uh, elevate really kind of convincing but flawed ideas if uh, like just the right people get behind it or like is, that's a beauty of democracy, group right? Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, I think part of the idea is, is um, enabling people who would have more power in a system to highlight those who don't, um, or to really like identify smaller, neat opportunities and and bring them to the forefront based on you know their ability to to vote on them or or highlight them. Um, so it's. Um, those are some of the thoughts around it. Um, but yeah, it's still something that we're thinking through in terms of what might be some of the negative consequences of doing something this way. You know, are you concentrating power? Are you diluting it? 
Um, and so that's that's something, yeah, we're we're looking at as we go through. So question about who who would be your first target? Because I could see this going terrible if it's based off of Twitter. That that would just be horrendous. Or it could work. But if it's on something else like a, a um people working on a project and somebody has to make the decision of should we go this way or this other way, the person with the most experience or clout might be the one to ask. And you might not know if it's for this, who's touched this portion of the work more. This is our subject matter expert. We should ask this person what the decision is. Um, yeah, so we that, chose to use Twitter like solely because we're trying to keep the pilot as easy and simple as possible. And because it's got just such a very like distinct number that goes with your profile and you can link the profile in and um, you can kind of, you know, uh, automate some of that and have people's profiles go up and down. So it, that's the really kind of the sole reason that we chose it. And because it is a very public platform and well used within the crypto space, we figured this would be a good one to just trial it out with and then see, you know, what other more probably effective use cases would come from it. Um, and so that's that's really the only reason why we chose it. But I, I don't I agree. I don't think it's probably the best the best metric to be using to, you know, be, be considered clout versus, you know, uh, popularity or, or just, you know, someone buying Twitter, Twitter followers or something like that. Um, but for us, because we're just trying to keep the pilot so simple, it was a really easy, easy path to follow. Have you done something like um, seeing what, if you want to keep on using Twitter, obviously you can buy bots, but maybe like even with the bots, um, somebody with more influence would be somebody with more triangles, like connected, like two people that whose followers are then following each other. If you have, and that's also an easy thing to do with Twitter relatively. Yeah, we will definitely take a think on it. Um, we've, yeah, as I mentioned, we've just been trying to keep it super simple up front, but we, we are mm -hmm. looking at different ways to, to take it forward. Yeah, I think it's a really good way to like see the values getting that uh, influencer clout. I guess there just needs to be a mechanism for like diluting the power of people who start off with a lot of clout who make really bad decisions and judgments. Yeah, perhaps. absolutely. That's that's something that's a good thought. I'll I'll keep that one in mind. I think it's also um, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out, basically, because I th I think that the uh, at the end of the day, you don't you don't really know whether the sort of you know desideratum that you're after is going to happen until you try it, which is to say, are you going to end up amplifying uh, voice, you know, uh, like the wrong kind of Twitter influence, or are you going to end up refining it to, to you know, something a little bit more reasonable? Um, and uh, um, yeah, I, I think it probably depends how you set it up and tweak the, you know, tweak the, the subtle cues and, 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 parameters, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think, I think it could be great. Um, yeah, also, I mean, it, it, it's a, it's a good, uh, perhaps a good transition to talk a little bit about uh, radical exchange voice, which, um, which uses a number of, a number of similar ideas and tries to do something similar in a way. Um, but before we get there, would love to, um, yeah, keep the stage open. If anybody would, would like to, to share a project or, um, uh, opportunity for collaboration or anything like that. Uh, if I may, I've just published a new website put together. It's called uh, planetarycouncil.org. This is simply because United Nations was created in 45 um, after the World War II. Before World War II was World War I and League of Nations. Uh, so the website is live and it contains a couple of key policies if we want to handle climate emergency. The World Economic Forum has this meme of the Great Reset. And actually this meme by Davos Guys is, uh, is cool because we can reset agricultural subsidies, uh, energy subsidies, 
Mm, so I will put the link into the description, uh, into show notes, into this you know chat box, the planetarycouncil.org. Literally today I put the website online and it contains uh, several key policies. And the idea in a nutshell is to peacefully transition the United Nations into the post-COVID New World Order. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, another qu uh, quick announcement is um, if you haven't caught it on, on our Twitter feed or, um, or somewhere else, uh, uh, Radical Exchange is doing a, um, a significant event tomorrow with, um, with ENAP, which is a, uh, um, a policy institute in, in Brazil, like really kind of one of the, one of the leading like think tanks slash higher edu you know, institutions of higher education in, um, in, in Brazil, where we'll be sort of, it's, it's sort of like a, a full day virtual conference where we will be presenting, um, um, a bunch of different radical exchange related uh, ideas, uh, largely to an audience of uh, policymakers in, um, in Latin America. Uh, there'll be talks from Vitalik, uh, from, from Audrey Tong, from um, Joe Goldie, uh, from Glenn with uh, shorter talks from, uh, from a number of others. Um, and it's going to be, uh, Really cool. So if you're if you're interested in you know sort of tuning in, watching uh, part of that event tomorrow, um, uh, find the links in our in our Twitter, or, or maybe someone can add them into the into the chat, um, and it would be um, 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 yeah. Just want to make sure that you're able, anyone who's interested is able to check that out. Okay. Um, I think, uh, I think let's, um, let's talk a little bit now, uh, um, or sorry, um, floor still open. Is it, if anyone has uh, projects they'd like to like to talk about. Is that Brazilian conference in English or Portuguese? Or it, is, it is in English. It will be, it's a, it's an internationally targeted event, so all of the content will be in English. Thank you. Okay. Um, shall we talk a little bit about, um, uh, Alex, would you like to talk a little bit about the results of the uh, Radical Exchange Voice um, beta and sort of dig in on some of the some of the lessons learned and uh, go forward takeaways from that? Sure. So as uh, many of you know, we recently finished our first major pilot of Radical Exchange Voice, which is our tool for decentralized um, decision making. And we it we were super pleasantly uh, we, we, we were super happy with the, with the result. We ended up with this really great um, ranked list of actionable proposals from the community for the Radical Exchange Foundation to focus on in the coming year. Um, and we did it using this really interesting mechanism that we've been working on for uh, several months now. Um, so just, I'll, since we've kind of hit on this a lot, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do it. I'll keep my recap here very brief uh, and then just open this up in case anybody has questions about the results or comments on the process or just have an open discussion about how it went. But uh, the way we did it was we invited um, 150 people to participate. Um, and that was, uh, we tried to be as inclusive as possible. We, we um, invited any, basically we made a list of anybody we could think of from the network, the, our community. And then as many of you saw, we put out an open call on our live streams and in the community call and everything. And anyone who asked us to be added, we, we added to, the, to this pilot. Um, 
in the end of that 150 people who we invited, 68 joined and signed up and participated. Um, and then we, uh, in the first stage, that group of people all receive 99 voice credits, equal number of voice credits. Um, and then they're allowed to transfer any number of their voice credits to anyone else that they want to, whether um, they can transfer voice credits to someone who's already in the system, if they think that they should have more influence over the decision. Um, and they could also transfer voice credits to someone who didn't already appear in the delegate list to invite them into the process. If they thought that they should have a say. Um, so that was the first round. Uh, that went really well. Everybody was sending a lot of transfers and we ended up with like a, a pretty even voice credit distribution, but had a lot of interesting activity there. And then all of the transfers from that stage were matched using quadratic funding, which gives a boost to people who receive uh, broader support from the community. So if I received transfers from multiple people, I would receive a, a higher match there at the end. Um, so then we had this sort of this, this uh, sort of liquid delegation um, with sort of democratically decided interesting voice credit distribution. And then we open it up for everybody to co contribute on polis and submit proposals for the final ballot. And uh, as I mentioned before, the question was, what activities should the Radical Exchange Foundation prioritize in the coming year? Um, and we got really great proposals from the community. Then we did sort of a curation process where we, where we curated those proposals into a coherent ballot of, of uh, proposals that traded off against each other in a, in a way that made sense. Um, and then we uh, opened up a vote and all of the delegates used the voice credits that they had left over from the first stage and voted using quadratic voting on that ballot. Um, one last interesting uh, mechanism there was to sort of correct the, or as a check on the kind of centralized nature of that curation process where we curated the proposals from the polis conversation into a coherent ballot, we added another proposal called the ballot ratification proposal. And if anyone in the community thought that the ballot didn't accurately represent the uh, the submissions from the community um, or that it was drafted in bad faith, they would have the opportunity to uh, contribute negative votes toward that ballot, ballot ratification proposal. So in the end, we ended up with this really great uh, result that you're looking at here. Um, and we got really clear signals from the community about what activities we should be prioritizing in the next year. Um, and I, I'd love to sort of dive into these results and uh, take any questions that you have about them or about the process now here. Uh, should we, uh, should I um, go over the, the top proposals here or Matt, did you, did you wanna, did somebody else wanna take the floor and do that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's useful to um, go over this briefly. And so, and, um, and then, and then have a, like an, uh, an open discussion about it. Cause I think it's, uh, it's, it's important. So the, um, I, you know, looking at the top five, so these, so these proposals, these, this list of five are the, are the top five ideas that were sort of surfaced by this, by this process and, um, and, and voted up. Um, I think that there's a couple things that to notice for me about this. I mean, first of all, just that these, these proposals like uh, seem to make sense. They're, they're coherent. They're very much in the spirit of, um, uh, of the enterprise and they send a clear, a clear and sort of non-obvious signal um, about what the, um, you know, what the participants in this process would like radical change to, to focus on. So, and in the, the top two, as you can see, um, are uh, developing radical exchange voice with the aim of making it useful to other organizations, communities, blockchain groups, 
and developing it as uh, as an open source project. So um, so that's a pretty clear signal, right? That's a pretty clear signal that um, that taking this radical exchange voice tool and process um, and refining it, um, investing some time and resources into um, uh, you know thinking deeply about how to how about how to make it better and also making it uh, you know developing the software to the point where it's it's accessible and um, can be can be used by by other communities um, and and brought forward by an open source community is um, should be a really high priority for us and I think um, I was happy to see that result and um, and to me it sounds like a a clear mandate that we that we really should um, you know take this um, this piece of work that embodies you know the sort of experimental spirit of the radical exchange movement um, and you know concretizes it in, a, in the form of a tool um, that we should prioritize that um, so that's great um, the third proposal is um, producing more like high quality uh, content to communicate ideas so okay that's great too um, this, the, you know, that, that also sends a, sends a clear signal that that is an area of our work, um, to, uh, to double down on, um, the fourth one, uh, developing radical exchange software to facilitate pilots of RxC ideas by, uh, by chapters and others. Um, this is an interesting one, which I'd love to sort of, you know, talk about here on the, on the community call, talk about like what that might mean. You know, one, one way of interpreting that is, um, uh, is to kind of lump it in with the Radical Exchange Voice project, which is to say, you know, keep building out Radical Exchange Voice and uh, make that available to uh, to chapters so that they can use it for uh, for governance. But there might there are, you know like a number of other uh, uh, possibilities for you know what how best to interpret that fourth um, mandate. Um, and then number five here is explore solutions outside of crypto and blockchain that relate to ideas identified in, in radical markets, um, which um, you know is an, another one to to talk about a little bit. I, I think that um, a number of a number of the projects that that we're we're doing um, and that we continue and that we you know intend to continue to uh, to invest in. Um, uh, uh, fall under that fall under that rubric, you know. So, to give a few examples, like our work integrating quadratic voting into decision making with government bodies, um, like the uh, legislative caucuses and uh, executive branch uh, like agencies and stuff in Colorado. Uh, that's all, you know, outside of blockchain um, uh, implementations of 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 quadratic voting and, and other kinds of, you know, RxC inspired decision-making. Um, uh, similarly, like the work that we're doing now in, in Brazil with um, uh, um, city councils. So a, a couple of weeks ago, we did our first radical um, quadratic voting workshops with uh, the city council of the, um, the city of Gramado, Brazil. Uh, so I think that kind of work falls into that um, uh, falls into that, but there's you know a number of other number of other um, yeah like there's a lot a lot of room for interpretation in that one. Um, you can see the complete list here, and um, uh, yeah would would love to just kind of open the floor a little bit and talk. Uh, talk about how to. Um, there's, I think there's a few topics of, of conversation. One is to, one is sort of um, recapping the radical exchange voice beta. Um, if anyone who, who participated in it had thoughts about what worked well, what didn't, what was confusing, what you know, what went right, what could have gone better about the process, that would be that would be great. Um, and then we can also. I, I think it would also be great to to just talk about these proposals and you know how um, how Radical Exchange Foundation can um, uh, can like deliver on them and hold itself accountable to the to the mandates here. So yeah, Sean, thanks. Uh, yeah, I was I was really happy with it. I thought it went 
uh, pretty well. I was pretty happy with the results. They all seemed fairly reasonable. Um, the ballot construction kind of seems like a real uh, can of worms. Um, like we've got a fairly good idea of what good voting choice, like voting systems there are out there to choose from a set of options. But uh, constructing that ballot really is, um, I guess, quite a difficult thing. And doing things like merging similar ideas in a decentralized way, in a way that doesn't require one person to kind of make subjective judgments. Um, so yeah, I was wondering kind of what the future of ballot construction looks like, if there are any kind of perfect utopias of ballot construction out there, or if there will always kind of be uh, chasing this uh, ideal ballot that is impossible. Yeah, that's a great question that we've thought about a lot. And that is, you know, in, in a sense, like attempting to get a little bit more traction on that question is one of the main, uh, you know, inspirations behind the radical exchange voice itself. Um, so to to lay the foundation here, you know, um, quadratic voting is a, you know, as, as you, you know, Sean, like quadratic voting is a, is a process that is a really good way of, of helping a group make decisions between a preset list of options. Um, but there's a lot of sort of off screen, um, uh, power exerted in the construction of the list of options. So quadratic, so radical change voice itself is an attempt to sort of democratize the, um, the set of people who are voting on the list of options, and then also um, uh, uh, subject to democratic accountable, democratic accountability, the process of constructing the ballot. So the way that we, um, the way that we did this in the beta was basically that we, you know, we took the the online deliberation process uh, from Polis, and then we took the we we looked at the results of that conversation and the the ideas that were surfaced in that conversation, and with a very sort of light touch, curated that into a um, into a you know as coherent as we could make it list of of mutually of you know options that didn't that didn't overlap too badly. Or that you know we're we're all um, you know uh, actionable and grammatical and feasible, right? So there's we just very like a light touch curation process that we did um, uh, to take go from the deliberation to the to the ballot. Then the um, and then the main sort of like the main kind of innovation, the main like interesting idea that that. Um, RC voice introduced here was to uh, subject the curation process to ratification. So one of the items that was on the on the final ballot, like just among the you know added to the to the list of um, of proposals from the deliberation, was a ballot ratification item. So um, uh, what that means is that. You know the, the voters can upvote or downvote the ballot ratification, so they can you can they can transparently see the results of the deliberation, and then they can see the curated ballot. And then you on that ratification item, if like if you approve of the cure of the curation job, then you can upvote the ratification item. If you disapprove of the curation job, you can downvote the ratification item. If the ratification ballot item had gotten negative votes, then we would have just kicked back the, um, the we, you know, basically the election would have been voided and we would have, um, you know, gone back to the curation process and either, you know, nominated somebody else to curate it or done, or done it again until, you know, the, the group, um, you know, uh, would ratify the, the curation. So, so that's the kind of, that's the kind of like key innovation here, but even within that, you can imagine lots of different interesting ways of doing it. So, you know, partly because this is just a beta and we're, we're trying not to introduce too much complication right off the bat here, uh, we just did it. We just did the curation uh, process. But in future iterations of, of Radical Exchange Voice and, and, you know, when other organizations deploy it, you could, um, you could build more um, uh, kind of 
scaffolding around the curation. So in other words, you could add another election phase where the curator is elected from the from the group of people who have um, who have uh, credits to participate in the process. Or you could use sortition. You could like randomly choose um, somebody from the group to, to perform the, um, the, the curation. And I think both of those, both of those ideas, like adding one more sort of, um, you know, democratic safeguard in that curation process are, are interesting, um, uh, interesting like augmentations of ARCC voice that um, that probably would will make sense in in a number of contexts. Um, you could also Matt, there's some other dials. You Matt, sorry, I don't want to yeah. I don't want to interrupt you, but um, see has a hand up, and we have some comments um, in the chat. Just to let you know. Oh, sorry, I'm rambling on here. Um, Um, yeah, totally. Yeah. These, these kind of self-referential ballot items are, are very interesting. Um, and uh, I, I was talking uh, to someone who had the idea of, uh, you know, every ballot should contain the uh, item, everyone doesn't have to eat a ghost pepper. Um, so now suddenly every decision is relative to how much do you want that thing and how much do you not want to eat a very spicy chili, something like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, one. I mean, one of the things that that to me is most exciting about the idea of of kind of just adding a ballot ratification item to the ballot is that it separates uh, protest votes from like substantive votes um, on the uh, on the ballot items. So, for example, like you know, one of the sort of classic problems in voting is that is that sometimes people will choose option X over option Y basically because they want to express uh, frustration with the whole process or they want to express the, the sentiment that, you know, this is all bullshit or something like that. Having a ballot ratification item on the ballot allows you to like, you know, actually do that directly without sort of polluting the, the result of, you know, of the, you know, the choice between the, the substantive items. So, um, so like if you wanted to cast a protest vote on the RxC voice ballot, it doesn't make sense to just like, you know, choose a stupid idea and vote for that. It, it's much more direct to, to just downvote the ballot ratification, just throw a wrench in the process directly that way. That way you can, so as a result of setting it up like that, you can kind of like trust the results of the, um, of the election, you know, of the, of the, on the ballot between the substantive items a little bit more. Can, I, can uh, I ask a practical question? Yeah. Okay, so like this is all theoretical, which is obviously fine, but um, I've reached out to two groups, one of them who seems more interested than the other to use it, but it seems like the, there's like a pretty big bus factor of Alex, um, like of one. Would it be beneficial to have Alex train other people how to do it so that they can, instead of saying, read this book, watch these videos, they can say, I noticed that we're having some trouble. I'm taking executive action or doing this poll. And instead of it being survey monkey or, or whatever it is that they usually use, or like even, even you guys send out a type form, they're gonna say, and I know how to use this other thing and we're gonna test it out. And that way, every, then it just becomes normal. Like, like um, it's normal in this culture of radical exchange to get a type form. And then if you have something that you wanna, you just fill out the type form, you know, somebody, at least one person will read it. Um, but if it becomes normal to receive a survey, like I got, I was in another meeting yesterday and I was a little cranky because nobody sent out the survey. So I was like, how am I like, what if I can't talk in the meeting or something? Um, so maybe, maybe a path forward would be teach people how to administer and then they can go sell it that way. Um, is there a plan to do that or, or like a tutorial or something? A, a webinar? I don't know. Yeah. Alex can put a little bit more color on this, but basically there's a little bit more um, development work that we need to do to, to build out the actual platform. Assuming so, that you're the people attending our developers. Let's just like, cause that would be who I would be targeting. Like me personally. Okay. okay. I've... Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the repo is, is there, we can post a link to it. Um, and Alex, uh, um, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe you should respond to that one, Alex. 
not to put any pressure on Alex, but to put a little bit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm super excited to like get more people involved on the repo. And so your, your question was specifically about, sorry, I was kind of answering, looking at some questions in the chat. Um, so your question was specifically about, um, training people to use the platform without our support or was or, or maybe that? or maybe both like let's say that every month there's a radical exchange polis about like something simple like what are we going to talk about the following month's meeting something in that way that way the administrator gets better better at administering because there's stuff that you did for the first one that you will not want to do again and yeah. you'll you'll probably just fix it so that you don't have to deal with it um, and then once somebody else shows up and their little fixes will just happen and it'll become regular and all the attendees here will have experienced it. Um, and they'll also learn what it's like to participate in one. And then maybe you can like have a buddy, like a one, like one trainee per month that you say, all right, now you're going to administer it. And then you do it together. And that's how the knowledge gets spread out. Like the, the knowledge spreading of how to, how to set, how to at least administer it, maybe not even set it up, but how to administer it. Um, gets spread out on something that isn't so important. Like this will be the RxC voice agenda item. Is that really that important? No, because somebody could bring it up later, but, but at least you get the training out and then it'll spread organically. Yeah, that's a really cool idea. I like that. Yeah, if we could, if we could um, do that and have like a monthly um, RxC voice decision that kind of moved at a faster pace, for a kind of smaller question like what should what should the agenda be for our community call this month or next the following month because like yeah we, like the, and that would also address a little bit of Paula's concern that I've noticed um like I I'm part of the group in my city that runs the town halls which is essentially people show up when they just can't figure out how to get their their complaint in any other way and they're like the airplane is making too much sound. I don't know. And, but it's, you can tell that they've been holding on to this for such a long time. Um, but if there's like a regular way for you to do it, and then you feel like somebody will actually take action, even if it's just to write it down, um, then there's a lot less of that spamminess and people just flow, you know, if you don't have the dam breaking thing, it's rather a trickle. Yeah. Yeah. Which really is what you're solving now with the type form. Um, but this would be a little bit more like, you know, better because it's RxC voice, which is inherently better than type form. Yeah. And we could really kind of iron out the process and kind of like, um, yeah, get more, get people familiar with it, you know, work out the kinks and everything. I, I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, yeah. And, and it would be helpful because, you know, cause I should mention, this is sort of like our, this is sort of like our main goal for next steps for the project is, is to make it easier for other organizations or groups or whoever to run a, to run a decision on RxE voice whenever they want. So that would be that would be a super helpful like parallel testing stream for, for that process as I'm kind of building out like the admin consoles and everything. That's a great idea. And I, okay. I just want to, I just want to, I just want to plug again, all these kinds of ideas and these conversations, like, please let's continue it in the RxC voice dedicated channels of our discord server, because this is like, this is super helpful. And I am super excited to like bring you all into the conversations that we've been having behind the scenes that have been really fascinating. Okay, well, uh, thanks, Angela. I think you had, had called me on. I, I posted this in the chat box, um, and I'm just wondering what, you know, as you're going, this is obviously an early pilot, and you're doing these experiments. Um, are you tracking data as voters kind of move through the process? So, you know, things of how their votes might change between when they vote on the list of options, the options themselves, um, you know, the absolute number of votes per proposal. I know in an actual system, you wouldn't want to do this to protect people's privacy. But, um, you know, for the purpose of understanding the mechanics of how this is playing out, are you doing any of that additional data connection, uh, collection and analysis?
Matt, did you catch that? I was I was reading comments again. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, I've got too many things going at once. Um, no. So I mean, that kind of sort of like, uh, if I understand the question correctly, Ryan, you mean like, sort of like, web app type analytics, like see how much how long people are spending on pages and stuff like oh, that. Oh no, no, just seeing how you know how they're voting. So I mean, I guess the 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 uh, easiest one to do would be, you know, the actual average number of voters per proposal to see if people, you know, how much of their voice they're putting into things, um, just yeah. to kind of get a sense as you're building out the, uh, you know, model construction of how to do this, just might give you some more insights. Yes. Yeah, so that type of, of info, just essentially detailed analysis of the results we, we do have, um, and are, are definitely, um, you know, paying attention to the sort of like rates of concentration of, of voice credits and, you know, how much people are, are uh, you know, putting all of their credits towards one proposal or another. And, um, uh, and you know, we'll be paying attention to how that evolves, you know, as we tweak parameters and these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it'd be interesting to see how as people vote on the actual list of options, especially when you have a couple of different things worded together you know, does that voter then, you know, if there's a consensus option, um, you know, do they still vote on it with the same um, uh, enthusiasm, I guess, as, uh, uh, as they did earlier on or, or as other things up there? Yeah, that's a really interesting question, actually, like correlating the concentrations or the, you know, the how much people are focusing their voice credits with the degree of consensus that the uh, proposals were getting. Yeah, I, I've been digging into all of those uh, sort of analytics a lot in the last couple of weeks since we finished this pilot. And it's been, yeah, it's been really interesting. And I'd, I'd love to share uh, some of the interesting data that I've seen as long as uh, I, I'm, I'm, make, I'm trying to be careful not to, uh, to, to protect everybody's privacy. So anything that like could be de-anonymized in any way we are reluctant to share but i have some some interesting things that i'm kind of compiling and uh i i, I hope to put out a, a blog post soon about this type of thing and with with some of the interesting findings from that data um the one Thanks, thing about I, I don't want to cut you off again but i i think being conscientious of the time uh paula do you want to uh jump in Sure. Uh, really quickly, I I authored one of the proposals. That, I don't know if there were many others, but uh, one of the proposals kind of in the direction of saying that radical exchange should produce high quality media. So I just wanted to clarify a bit of what I meant uh, there. And it's, I think I'm, I'm speaking to this challenge, which is that radical exchange needs to rely on journalists or media channels or uh, I don't know documentary filmmakers in order to convey its ideas and that uh, external reliance kind of slows I, I think it slows down um, just its its capacities uh, the, its capacities to kind of propagate its message so I just think that if radical exchange could really make this a priority, to really develop really high quality, especially videos. I think that that's what I wrote. Um, like there are these amazing videos on YouTube, which like explain complex ideas with really good graphics and animation, like these types of things. Like if this could be developed in house so that Radical Exchange wouldn't need um, these, you know, external uh, partners to, to do that. I think that would make uh, a big difference because we're dealing with complex ideas it's always a challenge to to convey them so if if we if radical radical exchange can just you know do do all that internally and really develop this expertise of like how to communicate complex ideas visually um i think it would be super important so just wanted to kind of expand on, on my input there Not sure if there Thanks. are any plans. I would love to hear if there are. Yeah, I mean, we've um, we've we've done like a number of 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 things, sort of in that direction. You know, like trying trying to 
trying to make videos that like concisely explain quadratic voting and quadratic funding and and uh, you know self assessed taxation. I think they can get a lot better. What's I, that? I feel like I feel like they can get a lot better. Like totally. Need, like, like I feel like radical exchange could have you know real like artists you know video motion animators who like uh, just do it really really well. That that's that was the direction of my the sense of my my input there. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. Thank you, Paula. No, that does also give um, a little bit more like breadth to like what the suggestion was. So that's um, very appreciated. And we'll probably can talk more on the Discord or offline. Um, and also, Amit, sorry, <laughs> we can't um, get into another uh, topic because we are at the hour. Um, but feel free again, uh, we'll drop the Discord link down below. Um, also, everyone, I'm Angela Corpus. I am the Director of Media and Partnerships. Um, just got, uh, I was formerly the community lead. So thank you all for um, being on the call. Um, and if everyone, the rest of the team wants to introduce themselves real quick, um, Matt. Oh, sorry. So, I introduced myself. I'm I'm Matt Pruitt, uh, president of Radical Change Foundation. Um, uh, I, I know many of you, but uh, yeah. Just again, okay. Um, I'll actually just say everyone's name. Uh, Jen Marode. Uh, she's our CEO. If you want to give a wave, um, we have Leon Erickson. Where is he? uh tech evangelist yeah. and then we have alex uh how do you say your last name alex <laughs> rendaccio <laughs> yes or no <laughs> rendaccio thank you <laughs> our project developer um but yeah thank you guys so much for your time um i'll let matt close it out but thank you uh no that's it thank you so much everybody for joining uh great conversation about um radical exchange voice and other things and um uh yeah hope hope some of you are able to watch the event tomorrow and um all the best i also see i see a question from noor about when we open the fellowship application process um and i think the answer is like early fall so we'll, we'll do an, you know another um uh, another round of fellowship um uh early next year and we'll yeah we'll announce it soon Thank you. Cool. Thanks, everybody.